Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snatus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our labs playlist. In previous videos, we talked about the beta 2 microglobulin, the true acetylcholinesterase versus the pseudo acetylcholinesterase. We talked about anti acetylcholine receptor antibodies. We talked about serum potassium and urine potassium, serum chloride and urine chloride serum uric acid and urine uric acid today we'll talk about serum proteins albumins and globulins and in the next video we'll talk about urine proteins plasma proteins are albumin or globulin which one is more abundant albumin which one is larger in size globulin please watch the videos in this playlist in order this is a very important slide to understand your blood consists of plasma and cells the plasma is made of water and proteins. The proteins are either albumin or globulin. Albumin is more abundant but small. Globulin is larger but less abundant. Everything has a trade-off. So if I add albumin and globulin together, what do I get? Total serum protein or serum total proteins. If the normal albumin in my blood has a concentration of about four milligrams per deciliter and globulin is about three, then four plus three equals seven serum total proteins. But that's not the end of the story. Globulins have many types. There is the alpha globulin, is divided into alpha one and alpha two. There are beta globulins and gamma globulins. What's the most important alpha one globulin? Alpha one antitrypsin. And you study this in pulmonology. If you want a refresher, please refer to my video on emphysema. You will find it in my pulmonology playlist. How about alpha-2 globulins? These include angiotensin O gen, which will be converted into angiotensin 1 by renin from the kidney. Then angiotensin 1 will become angiotensin 2. Then angiotensin 2 has two functions. Function 1, constrict vessels. Function 2, release aldosterone from the adrenal cortex. Then we have HAP2 globin, also an alpha-2 globulin, and ceruloplasmin. You have heard of the story of HAP2 globin before in my videos on hemolytic anemia, and ceruloplasmin is related to Wilson disease and copper metabolism. Next, the beta globulins. These include coagulation factors, all of them except calcium, which is coagulation factor number four, and transferrin, the transporter of iron in the blood. If it ends in IN, it's a protein, with few exceptions. How about gamma globulins? These are your immunoglobulins, also known as antibodies, such as IgG, IgM, IgA, IgE, IgD. And then if I perform serum protein electrophoresis, I get this. Here is albumin, the most abundant. Look at this spike. Followed by alpha-1 globulin, alpha-2 globulin, beta globulin, and gamma globulin. What happens if my serum protein drops for whatever reason? Well, if your protein decreases, you will lose the force that keeps fluid inside the vessels. So here are the proteins, but now I have no proteins. So who's going to keep the fluid inside the vessel? Nobody. All of that fluid will leak to the outside, giving me ankle edema. The problem is that there is less fluid left in the vessel, which means less blood perfusion to the kidney, to the heart, to the brain, etc. So what causes me to have less proteins in my blood? Maybe I'm not eating enough malnourishment, such as Quasher core syndrome. Maybe I'm not making proteins because of liver disease, such as cirrhosis, or maybe that I'm losing proteins. I could be losing proteins through my skin in third degree burns. Everything is oozing out through the burnt skin, including plasma, plasma proteins, electrolytes, etc. Or I could be losing proteins through the gut, such as a protein losing gastropathy, menetrius disease, or protein losing enteropathy, such as malabsorption syndrome or celiac disease. Or it could be that I'm losing proteins in the kidney. This is protein losing nephropathy, aka nephrotic syndrome. Regardless of the cause, at the end of the day, there is less proteins in my blood, all the fluid will ooze to the outside, giving me the edema that is pitting, dependent, transudate, and caused by decreased oncotic pressure. The edema could be in the ankle, in the presacral area, or in my belly, or pleural effusion, pericardial effusion, pulmonary edema, you name it. 
If you want to learn more about electrophoresis, I have three videos on this topic on my channel. One is in my biochemistry playlist, one is in my hematology playlist in the discussion of multiple myeloma, and the third one is here in the labs playlist. Electrophoresis basically means protein isolation and separation by means of electricity. Why do you want to isolate proteins? In order to study them. So you can do electrophoresis, you can do chromatography, at the end of the day you're trying to study those proteins. Electrophoresis means electrical separation. How can we separate one protein from the next protein by means of electricity? Well, well, well. Remember that your proteins are negatively charged, correct? Some might have a greater negative charge than others. Moreover, some are small, some are large. And we can exploit these physical properties of proteins and make them migrate away from the negative electrode and towards the positive electrode and based on who's gonna get there faster, we can tell which protein this is. And here is the normal graph. Albumin is here, everything else is globulin. Look at this, that's the normal gamma globulin. That's the normal level of my aminoglobulins or antibodies. But what's the name of the cancer that's making too many antibodies because it's cancer of plasma cells that make antibodies? It's called multiple myeloma. And we talked about this before in my hematology playlist. Look at that spike. Proteins are made of what? They are made of amino acids. Two amino acids together, dipeptides. Then tripeptides, oligopeptides, polypeptides, proteins. This is how you build up proteins. If you want to break down proteins, you go into the opposite direction. After I eat proteins, it's time to break them down into amino acids. Okay, I broke them down into amino acids. This is called digestion. By deamination and transamination, this amino group or the N terminus will leave the chat to become ammonia. The liver will convert the ammonia into urea by means of the urea cycle. This urea will leave the liver, will go to the blood, will end up in the kidney. The kidney will excrete the urea into the urine. Proteins digestion equals amino acids by deamination and transamination emanation you have the amino group ammonia liver will convert ammonia into urea this is called urea cycle urea will leave the liver and go to the kidney to get excreted into the urine this is normal what if i have liver disease do you think the urea cycle will take place no therefore everything before the block will go up and i will suffer from hyperammonemia so liver disease equals hyperammonemia but how about kidney disease equals uremia now to the most important slide in the entire video, serum proteins. What's normal? Your normal albumin concentration is around 4 mg per deciliter. How about globulin? It's about 3. Do you remember my rule of 4s? I've told you before that the normal sodium is 140. Normal chloride is 104. Normal carbon dioxide in the arterial blood is 40. Normal bicarbonate is 24. Normal pH is 7.4. Normal PT, prothrombin time, is 14. Normal potassium, 4. Normal albumin, 4. Normal phosphate, also 4. Normal TSH, 0.4 until 4. 4 plus 3 is how much? 7. That's your serum total proteins. And here's the normal serum protein electrophoresis. Abnormally. Let's talk about the causes of too much proteins, hyperproteinemia, or too little, hypoproteinemia. Anabolic steroids, androgens, and other hormones might boost proteins. Conversely, oral contraceptive pills and anything that's toxic to the liver, because the liver is the factory that makes your plasma proteins, will lead to decreased proteins. Then let's talk about them one by one. Albumin. What are the causes of increased albumin in the blood? If you're dehydrated, albumin will seem more abundant. It's a trick. So this is dehydration. How about cause of low albumin in the blood? Maybe I'm not eating. Maybe I'm not absorbing. Maybe I have liver disease, so I cannot make it. Maybe I have protein-losing nephropathy, like nephrotic syndrome. Or protein-losing gastropathy, miniaturized disease. Or protein-losing enteropathy, this is celiac disease. Or third-degree burns, or third spacing, or third space losses. Maybe the fluid is leaking outside the body, such as in burns, or inside the body, like in ascites. What do you mean by third spacing? Where is the first space and the second space? The first space is in the intracellular fluid. The second space is in the intravascular. Anything outside these two is called third spacing. Ascites fluid is not intracellular and it's not intravascular, so it has to be in a third space. Get it? 
cool. Inflammatory conditions will decrease albumin but raise globulin. Let's think about that. If I have inflammatory condition, these conditions will tell the liver to make more acute phase reactants. The acute phase reactants are globulin. So the liver is making more globulin. But then the liver is consuming all of the raw materials in order to make globulin. Who's gonna suffer? Albumin is sacrificed. So look, you'll find that the inflammatory conditions are raising the globulins but lowering the albumin. Next, increase vessel permeability. If albumin is leaking outside the vessel and going somewhere else, there will be less albumin in your plasma. So this is a cause of decreased albumin. Overhydration is the opposite of dehydration. Too much water in the plasma will make albumin seem less concentrated. Pregnancy can also lead to decreased albumin. That's why nutrition during pregnancy is of utmost importance and never, ever, 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 ever tell a pregnant woman to lose weight during pregnancy. That's just plain stupid. Mommy is feeding two persons right now, so stop it. We are done with albumin. Let's talk about alpha-1 globulins such as alpha-1 antitrypsin. Increase in inflammatory condition, we can consider alpha-1 antitrypsin as one of the acute phase reactants. And it's decreased in liver disease. No liver, no alpha-1 antitrypsin production or in patients born without the enzyme. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, which can lead to cirrhosis and emphysema. We talked about this before in my pulmonology playlist. Next, alpha-2 globulin, which includes haptoglobin, ceruloplasmin, angiotensinogen, increased in inflammatory conditions, decreased in liver disease, hemolysis, I'm talking to you, haptoglobin, Wilson disease, I'm talking to you, ceruloplasmin. Next, beta globulins include coagulation factors, transferrin, and beta lipoprotein. They are increased if I'm taking estrogen. If I have iron deficiency anemia, I'll have decreased serum iron and decreased the stored iron known as ferritin. In response, the liver will make more cars transferrin more taxis because we're trying to catch more iron from the bloodstream. The beta lipoprotein is increased in cases of hyperlipidemia. Causes of decreased beta globulins include liver disease, I'm not making them, malnourishment, I'm not eating them, coagulopathies, especially consumptive coagulopathies. If I have DIC, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to consume all of my clotting factors. Low fibrinogen, low prothrombin, all of them will decrease. How about hemophilia? Isn't it true that in hemophilia, you don't have factor 8? It's true. However, this is just one factor among many. It's not going to be enough to decrease the hump on electrophoresis. But in DIC, boy, the hump will go down because you consumed all of them, not just one. Last, we have the gamma globulins. My antibodies are increased if I have cancer that is cancer of plasma cells, too many plasma cells, too many antibodies, such as multiple myeloma and Waldenstrom gamma globulinemia. In multiple myeloma, it's usually IgG, sometimes IgA. In Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia, it's IgM. Or light chain disease or chronic inflammatory conditions. Again, the increase globulin but they decrease albumin. Infections, why? Because antibodies will try to fight the infections. Hodgkin's disease can have high gamma globulins too. They are decreased in, who are the people who have less antibodies? People with immunodeficiency, whether it's congenital or acquired. Congenital include many congenital immunodeficiencies. Here are just some examples. Bruton's a gamma globulinemia, common variable immunodeficiencies, severe combined immunodeficiency or SCID, as well as Wiskut aldrich syndrome. Acquired immunodeficiencies include HIV AIDS. Maybe I'm taking immunosuppressants. Maybe I'm taking chemotherapy. Maybe I have leukemia or lymphoma or uncontrolled diabetes or a very severe nephrotic syndrome where I'm losing all the proteins in the urine. Some pearls for the pros. Inflammatory conditions will increase acute phase reactant production from the liver. These are globulins. So globulins will go up. Albumin is being sacrificed. Next. Familial idiopathic dysproteinemia is a congenital disease. It runs in families. Globulin goes up, albumin goes down. Be very careful while collecting your blood sample because if you apply the tourniquet for a long time, you will give a false proteinemia. The lab will tell you proteins are high when in fact the patient is normal. There is no disease here. You just apply the tourniquet for a long time. 
which might cause some hemolysis, some destruction, some breakdown of some cells, and these are the proteins that you see now in the blood. Oh, by the way, you can download all of these doozy notes in PDF forms on my website, medicosisperfectgenetics.com. Quiz time! Here is a normal person, and this is normal serum protein electrophoresis. From these results, can you tell me which one of these has type 4 renal tubular acidosis? That's the first question. After you can figure out which one has type 4 renal tubular acidosis, please tell me, which patient will have this graph? How about this? What do you see this in? Which condition will make the electrophoresis look like this? How about this? How about this? Let me know all of these answers in the comment section. Albumin and globulins can give you a clue about the health of the liver. And this is of utmost importance in the pre-operative care before I can send any patient to surgery. If your liver is weak and the surgery is not life-saving, the surgeon might hesitate before performing the surgery. You can learn more about pre-operative care, post-operative care, trauma surgery, orthopedic surgery, and much more by downloading my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectsnetics.com. In pregnancy, albumin goes down. That's normal. What else happens during pregnancy? Normal and abnormal. What is fatty liver disease of pregnancy? What is intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy? Learn more by downloading my OBGYN high yields course at medicosisperfectsnetics.com. Many toxins can destroy your liver and or your kidney, leading to abnormal protein labs. Learn more about toxidromes in my toxicology course. And for the normal kidney function, download my renal physiology course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.